Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. It's your girl Fanny Lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. Thank you for 21,000 subscribers. You guys are the best. Keep subscribing, liking, commenting, sharing, and everything that you guys do. We really do appreciate. Uh, check out our vlogging channel, Fanny and Jesse 2.0. Hit the subscribe and enjoy the content that we put out. So today I'm going to be reacting to You Are Not My Son Anymore. And yeah, so without wasting time, let's get into the video. What was the thing that couldn't make sense to you in Buddhism? How was your family's and friends reaction of your becoming Muslim? What is the worst hardship that you go through in Japan about practicing your religion? Then he started asking me why you are still Muslim quit being a Muslim. I told him, no, I can't. Then finally he, he goes, okay, then you are not my son anymore. Who is Ahmed Maino? Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. My name is Ahmed Maino. My given name is, still is, Naoki. I'm from Japan, originally from Aichi, which is the middle of Japan and currently living in Chiba next to Tokyo and working in Tokyo. And I'm the one of the four imams of, of Japan Muslim Association. Yes. My nafs ego, myself, awoke, woke up at the age of around 13 to 14 and then started asking myself, where did I come from? Where am I going to? And what am I living for? And since I was brought up in Japan, I was born and brought up in Japan, the atmosphere or the, the closest religion I found was the Buddhism. So I thought if I took that path of the Buddhism, especially the original path of the Buddhism, I thought I could lead to the answers for my quest. I once gave up finding the truth through religions, but then I had the chance of going to Australia, Melbourne, as an exchange student for about a year. Then during uh, my stay there, alhamdulillah, I met uh, one Egyptian family. They treated me very nicely. So knowing them through dealing with them, my biased viewpoint against Islam slowly melted away. So what was the uh, point that you became really convinced about Islam? After you know coming to the conviction with Islam that this is the one I was always looking for, I still had fear and anxiety towards my future because I was one of them, one of those who look at Islam with biased viewpoint against. So I knew if I took the final step, you know, over coming across the lead line of becoming and entering into the world of Islam and Muslims, how would I be looked at in Japanese society, in my own society? I would be looked at very strange, weird person. That was the last, the reason which made me of coming across the final line. But then watching the, the film of Malcolm X gave me the last push, encouraged me, alhamdulillah. Because as Malcolm X lived his you know, previous life as gangster and committing all kinds of sins or whatever, then seeing how beautifully, how greatly he changed himself, his life into the life of like, uh, someone like Saint, very straightforward person. And also uh, seeing at the scenery of the Hajj, when he made a pilgrimage to Mecca, which astonished himself. So many people gathered in many places for the purpose of watching soccer or, or dancing or the concerts, for the purpose of having fun. But people here, gathering here, so many people are gathering for the sake of worshipping one God. Is there any such praise other than this praise? I said, no. Then I, I finally understood. Becoming a Muslim does not mean that you have to be a timid person. No, becoming a Muslim is something very cool, very cool and beautiful and great. So, alhamdulillah, I took the final step and then embracing Islam. So the very night of that day, when I saw the film of Malcolm X, I consider myself that was the time I embraced Islam. I returned back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when I uh, put my knees down and then put my forehead on the floor and pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How was your family's and friends' reaction of your becoming Muslim? Well, they misunderstood. Although I told my parents my story of coming to Islam from A to Z, but they misunderstood. Yeah, then that's why in the beginning there was no problem actually. But then when 
social issue happened in Japan appeared, obviously that was due to some fanatic cult called Omu, those who you know, threw the, the killing poison inside the subway trains of, the, of Tokyo. Although it was nothing to do with Islam, they gave a very negative, bad image against having a faith whatsoever, having a particular religion whatsoever. So then there comes matter and issue of ignorance or not knowing about Islam. They, they thought Islam could be same or very similar to such fanatic people. When I was wanting to take permission from my father to go study abroad in Kuwait for the sake of uh, you know, learning Arabic language, I was already entering a university majoring Arabic language in Osaka. Then he said, no. Then he started asking me why you are still Muslim. Quit being a Muslim. I told him, no, I can't. Dad, you know that ever since I became Muslim, did I become nuts? Did I become worse than before? He knows inside himself, it's, it's not. I mean, the, his son, you know, the, didn't become any worse. Then finally he, he goes, okay, then you are not my son anymore. So that was a very shocking statement. And then, but since I was still, although I was having a part-time job and so on, but still somehow dependent to my parents. So I had to find some other way to go on my life. Then next day I went to the, the masjid in Kobe, then consulted my problem with the Egyptian imam. Then he gave me a recommendation letter to Egyptian embassy to get a scholarship in Azhar University. So I posted that letter to Egyptian embassy and then went back to my parents and then sat together with my parents with all calm atmosphere. And then alhamdulillah, I found my parents okay accepting me again. So alhamdulillah. Did they, any of them embrace Islam after you still? Unfortunately not. My father who passed away, although his latter time before dying, he even told me that if I start living with you, I will be ready to embrace Islam or something. But my you know, family circumstance didn't allow that. So, um, What was the thing that couldn't uh, make sense to you in Buddhism? What could, couldn't you find in Buddhism? One of those is reincarnation. Reincarnation is the thought started from India. And as you know, Buddhism was the successor of the Hinduism, or even the Buddha himself was considered to be revolutionist of the Hinduism. So the reincarnation is to see that you have the spirit, you have the soul, and this soul is uh, not never going to die and remains in this world through you know, many kinds of shapes, depending on your works depending on what you do. So the, the previous life, you might have been animal or uh, insects or whatever. And then according to your, your deeds here, this, what, this life, you may be different creatures. You may be a human being or you may be different creatures after the, this life. And likewise, unless you reach the Nirvana, unless you reach the true understanding of this whole universe and then get out of the reincarnation circle, you continue that way. That is how you know, the thought of reincarnation sees. So the question goes, then the numbers of people different from time to time. So if you say that the soul is, you know, keep living, keep, you know, reborn, keep giving a rebirth to another, how can you match those? And what's more was the, the reason which stopped me from becoming a monk, which is to separate completely from the sacred and the normal life or, or daily life. Yeah, they completely separate, differentiate between the life of faith and daily lives. So there you find the contradictions. If someone in Japan uh, wants to search for Islam and write some questions about Islam in Google, what should he or she get? In return? Well, there are many, so depending on how deep he or she is interested in knowing Islam. But I'm very unfortunate, there is a, some books written by uh, some orientalists who wants to you know, spread the hatred against Islam among Japanese people. Those books are like a best sellers, sellers of these days, something unfortunately. So they may be the first medias 
that they would find, I, I guess. What is the worst hardship that you go through in Japan about practicing your uh, religion and living your life as a Muslim? Currently? Yeah. Now? Generally. Well, I would say lack of helping hands because, like, I have, alhamdulillah, uh, five children, but, you know, we don't have, I mean, w my family they, they consists, including myself, seven people. The only Muslims amongst my families and relatives, so as the case of my wife. So we don't have families, hands of families to take care of. Community. Yes, family, or even the community. I am living in the place called Gyotoku in Chiba, where comparatively uh, many Muslims are living. But to my eyes, Muslims are gathering at the times of prayers, but for their private lives, uh, I don't see any links or you know the you don't find company bonds, you know. in your daily life with the other muslims so much what was the best attribute of the prophet that you know impressed you the most his mercy especially the time he was coming back from ta'if trying to call for the people of ta'if but being thrown the you know stones and against act then when he was offered by the angel of the mountain to you know crush them what he said, subhanAllah, please don't. Perhaps there might be generations after them, those who would believe in one God, subhanAllah. Why did you choose to become an imam? Because no one is doing. <laughs> there are, subhanAllah, very few stays even as Muslims. There are many people who pronounce the shahada, shahadatain, but Allah knows, God knows how they become after it, after the shahada, because there is no system established for taking care of them afterwards, following up. There's no, you know, and, and those, especially those who are coming from outside of Japan, those who are enthusiastic in Tao activities, they call people and then when they find people uh, giving shahada, they go after another target without taking care of the new ones. Well, well when I was still young enough to, after becoming a Muslim, there are very limited graduates of the Islamic studies from my uh, elders but because i was i think that was one of the reasons why i felt distant from their activities you know i was not living in tokyo so many of them in tokyo and uh, very few activities of them reached me reached people person like me so i i questioned myself although they've learned and they've given the opportunity to learn the deen of allah to the heart of youngster like myself that time they're not doing good enough. <laughs> they're not, you know. But of course, later on, I understood that everyone has, uh, you know, their own life and they're too busy for their daily lives. But that time, they're, they're not working good enough. I mean, they're, they're not making their best efforts or whatever. So then if, if no one is do, do, going to do, I have to do it. What do you think the reason is the people attack Islam so violently, so you know, ruthlessly? What is the reason? Even in Japan, you see the results. In my of opinion, this. one of the reasons for that is because they know, they understand that Islam is true. <laughs> and because they understand straight away inside themselves, the, after knowing, recognizing Islam as truth, they know if that they have to accept it. But if, if they accept it, it will be a burden on them. So they, they act uh, with hatred and you know, against it. Because you know, the, without the teachings and the, the education of Islam, our nafs becomes very fat and huge and you know, powerful against us. Is there anything you want to add? Oh, please. If you were uh, among our brothers and sisters, please don't forget to pray for me and for my family and especially for my mother's uh, Islam and also the mother of my wife and, and my brother in kinship and all you know, similar uh, circumstance people like the, our parents. Many of the parents of people like me, uh, leavers or converts, are still not Muslims, so please pray for us. Thank you. Jazakum khair. This was interesting to listen to. Like I always say, everyone has um, a beautiful journey to Islam, at least from what I usually watch 
I love the fact that he's not scared to say what he went through, the good and both the bad. I mean, getting the awakening when you're as young as 13, 14, that's something. That's something you should look into. And the fact that he doesn't hide that he's him and the family are the only Muslims among his extended family, that um, speaks volumes. Um, as long as the family is accepting of what he's chosen and how he's leading his family, then that's fine. And at the end of the uh, video, he asks for prayers. Always pray for someone who's willing to be prayed for, you know. Maybe his mother and mother-in-law will also convert to Islam. Um, I love the fact that he mentioned that some people do say the Shahada, but don't live like Muslims. And we're not, we're not here to judge anyone, and we shouldn't judge anyone. Sometimes when you say the Shahada, yes, you don't live the perfect life. Especially if you're converting, sometimes you may be, you're bound to like slap, fall back to your old mannerisms, which is okay. That's why I'm appreciating the fact that he's asking to be prayed for. And those people that feel like they're weak after saying the Shahada, change the environment, change the people that you're hanging with and be with those that think they can help you, they can help you understand. And, um... It's okay to fall back as long as you stand up and follow the right path tomorrow or today, later today. Do it. Don't be discouraged by anything in this world. Um, if there's anything you guys want to say, let me know down below. If there's anything you want me to react to, give me the name or the link down below and I'll be more than glad to check it out. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next reaction video.